Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Another episode of Trash Talk. I'm TJ O'Connor. With me, as always, Damien the Wolverine Hill. Trash Talk is brought to you by the sponsors of the show, Valhalla Combat Sports Incorporated, Ink Shrinks Tattoo, Origin Wellness CBD, Spartan Martial Arts, The Striking Institute, James Clark Sports Psychology and Hypnosis Therapy, The Fighters, and my mom. Damien, how you doing tonight? A whole lot better than you. That's great to hear, man, because I'm doing well, so that means you must be doing even better than well. But we're here to talk about uh, something that's come up recently. Uh, and it's the idea, the role of the corners, when to stop a fight, how to stop a fight, fighters, I don't want to use the word quitting, but fighters wanting out at a point in time. And when is that justified? As someone who's, I mean, realistically, you've been in over like 65 pro fights yourself. So if you include the hundreds of fights you've cornered at this point, I mean, we're talking, you've been a part of hundreds of fights in both roles. What do you think that role should be? And when does it become necessary? Like, do you mean as a, as the fighter taking it upon themselves or the corner taking it upon themselves to save the fighter? Uh, just for the sake of the question, start as the corner and then work that into a fighter's perspective. Oh, man. Okay. So as a corner, we all know you're supposed to help your fighter achieve victory without taking or taking as minimal amount of damage as possible. You know, uh, whether that is them inflicting a whole lot of damage, you know, by trapping a guy or them just kind of getting in, getting a smooth knockout, getting a clean submission right away, something like that, you know, but you want them to absorb as least amount of damage as possible on their way to victory. And then if they're on their way to defeat, to also allow them to get, uh, supply them with the tools and training and all that stuff that is going to allow them to even in defeat, take the least amount of damage possible. <coughs> now, that, that isn't always the case. I mean, you know, obviously people take damage and losses, you know. But again, trying to take the, the least amount. And then the corner, ultimately looking from the outside, realizing that th there's no, not no possible way that my fighter's going to win. It's not realizing that. It's just that there's no possible way my fighter's going to win without taking an absurd amount of damage that they don't need to be taking. And I feel like that's when it gets to the point for the, where it's safe for the corner to throw in the towel or uh, decide that their fighter's done and things like that. But then each fighter's different with that. You know, some guys, I mean, you might... You might think that that point has come sooner than you would against someone else or, or for someone else and things like that. And I mean, that we don't really got to get in all of that. But whenever the coach or corner decides that they're even if they do win, they're still going to take too much damage. That's when it's on the corner, I believe. And then when it comes to the fighter, understanding that you chose your cornermen and you gave them that power because you respect them enough to make those decisions and you feel like they know you good enough. At least that's what I hope goes into a lot of the guys choosing their corners. Not everybody has that luxury, you know, sometimes, I mean, sometimes you just, a teammate is the only one available to come corner you or what have you. But, but it's, it's tough from the fighter's perspective. I would never want anybody to throw in the towel for me, but I have thrown in a towel for fighters. I, it's different. I, and I, there, it's so hard to put into words from the fighter's perspective, you know, because I ultimately, like, I would hope you don't let me fucking take 30 shots after I'm already out, and or the ref doesn't let me do that either, you know, but... But uh, but if I'm if I'm out with one punch and I'm clearly out, I don't want to take another one. I mean, even if I, you throw in the towel, by the time the towel comes flying in, I'm recovering from that first one. But that second one would have certainly put me out. 
I would much rather play the what if game than suffer that damage that most certainly was going to be there. You know, I. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, it, it's a it's a tricky situation, and like, I, and I feel like you touched on, you know, as a fighter, you never want them to stop the fight. We hear it all the time, and it's almost to the point where sometimes it gets a little overzealous, and it kind of becomes comical, where it's like, I'm ready to die in that motherfucker. And it's like fighters, as a fighter, you kind of have to have that mindset. You have to be willing to understand that you're going to face adversity, but still be willing to rise above that, you know, if you can. But ultimately, like you said, when it comes down to it, when you step in the cage and you fight, you're putting your safety into the hands of the referee and the cornerman. And if the referee's not prepared to stop that fight for whatever reason, I mean, you hear it a lot of the times where referees stop fights too early, which I'm a fan of. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend like, like I shouldn't be. I want to see like you said, I don't think we take any unnecessary damage. We can live to fight another night. You can always run it back if you feel like it was that controversial. Um, but you know, if a, if a ref's not going to stop the fight, then ultimately as a cornerman, it's your job if you feel like they're taking unnecessary damage. And I like the way you worded that word. Unnecessary damage doesn't mean I don't think my guy has any chance to win. I have no faith in my guy. Taking unnecessary damage is we've, we've, we've done enough for tonight. We're, we're going to pull back. We'll, we'll live to fight another night. And that's ultimately what it comes down to is protecting your fighter because they're supposed to have that mindset. Yeah, well, and honestly, like you, you had said it at the beginning of your statement. Uh, uh, <laughs> I forgot your exact words, <laughs> but 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 pretty much, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't want anybody to to throw in the towel for me and all that stuff. But that was, I mean, that was then. Like I'm, I'm answering the question. Like when I think about it, when I really think about it, I'm looking at it from the outside perspective of somebody who doesn't fight anymore, and. Thinking back on some of the, you know, I don't know, some of the unnecessary sparring matches that have happened at some of the boxing gyms that I've went to and stuff is like, man, I get, I really didn't even need to do that. Like we, some dude uh, started ramping it up, and then you ramp it up right back, and then nobody wants to stop, and then you end up doing like twenty or thirty rounds, and you guys are just throwing heat the whole time because you're both pissed at each other, and you know, and. Granted that that's that hasn't happened many times, you know that that was uh I, I guess that was one that was a one time deal, <laughs> but uh but anyway like you start to think back on that it's like that was totally unnecessary and then you start I start to think about all the times where guys get rocked or they're out like on their feet and they're turtling up and it's just like do we really have to see them go out before we know they're done and i feel like that's become the the norm but i'm one of those guys like as as least from the corner's perspective i'm like i i know i feel like i can time it where i'm like i'm going to throw the towel in the the third punch before you get knocked out or something like that you know it's like it doesn't doesn't necessarily need to happen and then i guess i i felt like i also made that decision when i was refing too when i had stopped the fight like i had there was a guy i mean I think, uh, yeah, after three standing eight counts anyway, or three knockdowns, uh, it's a TKO anyway, or at, at least if it's in the same round. And, uh, and it, it pretty much was. But the third time when I was going to step in, he was absorbing some damage. He wasn't fighting back. And it's like, OK, he doesn't need to take anymore because he's not going to quit. He is not going to quit. But I mean, as the referee, I had to make that decision for him. And I'm not saying that the corner did a bad job because they put the trust in the referee to know when to stop the fight also, you know. But if I was to sit there and just let that fight continue, I would have hoped that the corners would have took it upon themselves to throw in the towel. But at the same time, I'm, I'm a competent rep. I mean, shit, I, fuck, now I'm going to fuck up probably. Uh, I, I believe to myself to be a competent ref. <laughs> but, but I'm but I, uh, sorry, I'm just going to wrap this up. I'm like, but I, I've just been looking at all of this from the outside perspective now. But when I was in it, when I was doing it, yeah, I was ready to fucking die in there, dude. I don't give a fuck. I'm ready to kill. I'm ready to die. My health is not a concern to me at all. Don't matter. But when you take a step back and you actually look at it. Yes, it is. It is. Because if I'm not healthy enough to live, then I'm probably not healthy enough to fucking fight. That. Mm. Yeah. And, and it's one of those things where, and, and I and I'm feel like I'm stealing like five different people's takes, so I don't want to know. But I'll give... 
we'll give Ariel the biggest shout out because he's kind of on the top of it. But there's like this bravado in MMA where you know it is a tough guy sport, and cornermen don't really stop fights. And you and you know where you see it all the time, boxing. In boxing, you see it all the time, and it's it's not an issue. A cornerman will stop the fight. Or like when you said you said it perfectly when you're talking about the, the kickboxing match that you were a part of, um, where you were repping and I can't remember if you said you were repping or you're repping, but like when a guy gets hit, you'll see it in boxing. The guy will get hit once, good, and he doesn't need to get hurt before a referee will stop that. If he gets timid and he avoids the fight, referee will stop that fight, and and it's not an issue. And and, and in a sport like boxing where wins and losses matter much more than in MMA. I mean, you just see it where a guy's record, it's truly that important on how you get paid and who you fight. You know, a guy, I got, I mean, George Masvidal has 13 losses. You're not going to see a guy with 13 losses fighting for a world title that's meaningful in boxing. It's just not going to happen because of the way the hierarchy is struck. But in a sport that wins and loss matter so much, the referees are still willing to take it in their hand. The corner's still willing to take it in their hand because they understand that you live to fight another day. But in MMA, where you can afford to lose a fight and come back and win the next one, and hey, your momentum's right back. I think it's something we we have to see more. And I'm not saying, hey, stop, go stop fights. But but when a fight's clearly over, the decision needs to be made sometimes just to fight the next night. Or not literally the next night, but you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, I you use the 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 phrase uh, clearly over, which is like, I mean, we. I know what you mean when you say that or whatever, but I, I, I don't like it because, I mean, we've seen some cra- – like, honestly, I would have stopped every Frankie Edgar fight ever. So true. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, but, but it's like, I mean, when it looks like they don't have the ability to win without taking an unnecessary amount of damage, and that's way too long to say all the time. But, like, I, I mean, but, like, Frankie Edgar, I, I, fuck, dude. Like, I would have stopped his fights. Yeah, and we, I, fuck, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know what this made me think of that. that <laughs> it's kind of another topic, but uh, relay off of that somehow. No, I, I'm with you, and it's one of those things where, it, it, you, like you said, you you can't overthink it as a referee. We get that. It's split second decisions. You have to make your decision, go with it, and stick with it, and that's what referees do. Um, but as a cornerman, you, you you like you said, you have that ability to step back. Where, where, I mean, you're, you're both figuratively, figuratively and literally outside of the ring. You're seeing what's going on. And even if you're in the moment and you're yelling jab, you're thinking something. So if, if, if you're yelling jab, work, 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 but in your head you're thinking uh, that this might not be it, you have to make that decision. And your fighter, your fighter might be mad at you. But you know what? They will get over it. And, and that's, just, that's just what it comes down to. I mean, ultimately, you're there to care about their – their health. And like I said, if, if we're in a fight and you're out there, you drop some guy and you're beating him up, I throw in the towel. Yeah, you're going to be fucking pissed at me. You might never talk to me again. But if it's a situation where you're on the opposite side of that, you know, you might be mad at me for a week. But ultimately, you're going to go, you know what? I get it. You know, the most common time I've seen in boxing, uh, Muay Thai and in uh, MMA, the, where, where guys have quit, you know, or, you know, uh, in, in the, I mean, while the fight is going on, it's to a body shot. <laughs> and it's, I, I, that one's more acceptable for some reason. I don't, I don't know why, you know, it hit in the body and they, they go down and they like, no, I'm done. Like they, and they put their hand up to the guy and the guy knows, okay. And then the ref's stopping it or a guy gets dropped in boxing and then the ref's counting them and they're like, no, they just sit back down. Like, no, I can't continue, dude. I'm, I'm done. And then, 30 or 40 seconds later, they might even be good, but they know that they're going to get killed in that 10 seconds if they try to stand up or whatever, you know? It's like, I, I don't know, but it's acceptable to quit that way. But, and I guess submissions, but like, it's not okay to say like, hey, fuck, dude, I'm taking too much of a beating and I'm not getting paid enough. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> That's not like people... Yeah, for some reason that's frowned upon, and like I said, at the at the at the end of the day, like I, I think MMA is harder, and you know, because because you only get half the pay if you don't win. But ultimately, if they're making that decision, you know, and, and it's not making that decision because that, that makes it sound like condescending. Like, but ultimately, you know, you make the decision if you're looking for a way out. Like you said, you can find a way out in a fight, and you know, I mean. I, th- I think we'd be just by if we didn't talk about the specific situation that kind of brought this up when we were talking off camera. But a- as a coach, 
if you have a fighter and we'll, we'll, we'll use the example without saying names, you're, you're start, you're in between the second and the third round. Um, the first couple rounds haven't been going your fighter's way and they tell you they want out of there. I mean, as a fighter, I mean, or as a coach and a fighter, I guess it's a little bit different, but what, how do you handle that situation? And it's easy hindsight 2020. So I don't want to make it seem like we're condescending or ripping anybody, but just, I mean, just going off of it when, when you seen that, you know, how could you, how do you think you could have handled that scenario? It, it's difficult because of all the things that we said earlier today, like, I mean, I guess just th- this is the best way. It's like I would, I would let them quit with protest. I would, I would try to say, no, man, you got this. You can pull this victory off or whatever. You got this. Unless, like, I clearly know, like, because I'm bringing up what I said earlier, when I believe they're going to take too much damage to achieve, uh, t- uh, while achieving victory or suffering defeat – it's like you don't need to take this damage you know but if i feel like it's closer than what they believe maybe you know i'll give them a little bit of a protest but if they're done i'm not you're done i'm not gonna make you fight you know it's like when when guys are going the rounds in the gym and there's some days that people are down to they're they're ready to go they they can go as many rounds as they want or whatever right and they're doing good or they're hanging with themselves until they get tired and then you know that that's that's how practice goes but there's other days where they're not in the zone. They're not there mentally that day for whatever reason. And they're just in, in the first round, even when they're uh, uh, not tired and shit, they're, they're fresh. They're taking an ass whooping that they don't normally take. It, it's like, dude, go sit out today. You don't, you, don't need to, you don't need to do this right now. You know, and like, it, I, like I've said that to people and I've done that on days where I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm just not in it right now and I don't need to be getting my ass whooped. And that's okay. But... Yeah, I, 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 I kind of can't remember where I was going with that. No, I feel you. This 100% is not the sport to play if you're not 100% into it mentally at that moment. I mean, we've all had off days in our real life. When you're at work and you're halfway through your shift, and you're like, man, this sucks. Imagine someone just punching you in the face the whole time. I mean, it's the worst case scenario. And, 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 and like I said, I mean, I feel like I've used the phrase live to fight another day so many times. Shout out. To Mr. Willie Jones, because you put that gun down, Craig, and you live fight. You might win and lose, but I mean, ultimately, if, if you don't want to be in there, most of the time that decision is going to be made before the fight. Nine times out of ten, it's rare that you're going to be in this situation. But since it's fresh and we talk about it, I mean, yes, it doesn't matter when it is. If you don't want to be in there, don't be in there because you can get seriously hurt. So I mean, you got you got to be in this to win this. Yeah, I guess that about wraps it up. That that's pretty much the point i put people that you trust in your corner and i mean i guess have these talks with your coaches and cornermen too also i mean don't let don't find out how people feel about this situation in the fight especially if you're going to be pissed if they on the on what they deem uh quittable or worthy of throwing in the towel and stuff versus what you deem worthy of it you know i mean Make sure it aligns or at least have an understanding, I guess, you know. The, but, yeah, this has been Trash Talk with Damien and TJ. Like this video. Subscribe to Trash Talk with Damien and TJ. Also, always remember, do not be a hoe.